Hey guys, what's up? All right, all right, all right. It's Double Deuce back. Uh, today's video, we're going to do a comparison video of the prototype sample engine of the Howland L6-210 um, compared to the production version. Now, there's a lot of changes that went through here, and uh, they're all positive. I kind of like it. And uh, machine work is very, very nice. I was really impressed with it. And uh, so, we'll go over some differences here. Um, and that way you guys can get a, a true look of what the production engine looks like. Um, I like a test engine, you know, because it, you know, gives you that kind of an open door in your mind for creativity. And when I seen the final product, um, it was uh, it was it was pretty stunning. So, who would have thought that we would have something like this now? But, anyways, guys, grab your favorite favorite smoke, beverage, popcorn, or whatever you want to do, and hang out with me today. All right, welcome back, everybody. I'm gonna stand today because I feel pretty good. That's a good that's a good sign there. I don't know why. So, I got sent this engine here as a test engine um, to, to do a video give the thoughts you know nice engine you know and I see there's a lot of changes that they put in here and I guess we'll go right from the top um, to the block now the top this is the production cylinder head first you're going to notice it's a different different blue a different color and uh now the valve cover is taller but the head is smaller so when you compare apples and oranges it's still the same height you see but the head is a little shorter and the valve cover is a little taller um another thing they did was on this one it just sets there you know what I mean it just sets there on top and on the new production one it looks more real because it's taller um, and they've actually put a lip on here so it locks in like so and you probably be able to seal it up too that way you're not gonna have your grease and oil seeping out the sides here and creating a mess now this one takes the small plugs and uh, and it also has rubber o-rings for focus here has rubber o-rings for your intake and exhaust manifolds um, this one had a gasket it just had a gasket that went through the side of it inside there and uh, it worked but this here probably work a lot better because it'll keep it sealed tightly with the uh, on your intake part so that's a that's an important thing another thing they did on the top <clears throat> this one had fixed rocker arm shafts on here they were non adjustable the only way you could adjust them was by backing the screw off a little bit. Now the new production engine actually has studs with adjustment nuts on the thing. So that way you can um, you can adjust each and every rocker arm in there. And inside where the uh, close up here inside you'll see the nice bronzed bushed pushrod guides in there and you'll see the cylinder combustion chamber is a lot cleaner on this final version uh, the overall appearance of this thing is really nice um, that's one of the changes I seen there on the top now as far as we go down you're gonna see there's no side cover on here 
Um, and it has two square blocks that screw in here with hooks because the camshaft did not have a, um, a bearing. This camshaft has a bearing here and a, a journal, I should say, here, <clears throat> which sets inside the block tightly and turns to keep it from flexing up and down, you know, bending in the middle from the stress. Um, and so the side cover actually bolts onto the side, <clears throat> just like a real engine, just like that. It bolts on, and you can take it off. And your your uh, lifters set inside these bronze tubes here. You're going to see I numbered my block because I, I numbered them for the rings to fit back into that cylinder bore. It does have the Howen engine printed on the side. Um, underneath, I did notice there's tiny little holes inside the journals here. You see a little angle in there. Each one has a hole that looked like they did not open it up because it looked like they were going to have an oil gallery come in here and lubricate these, but they're closed off. So I think they're they're, wor they're working on the splash technique of the oil inside to lubricate the push rods, the lifters, and the camshaft. <clears throat> so there is a little provision on the side cover at the very back here for a, a nipple. So it's probably up to you what you'd like to do. Um, running an oil gallery in here ain't gonna really do no good um, unless you want to open up those little machine holes that they started to let it drip down. But for some reason they eliminated that. So that's unneeded. So now <clears throat> the front <clears throat> distributor case is altogether different on this thing. And they have an updated distributor here. You see? Totally updated. It has a small little hole in the side here, right there, for your hall sensor to go in. And I did notice inside the distributor, they moved the hall sensor closer, which is cool. And this one came with complete spark wires and everything. And you'll see here, it is adjustable. They have slots where you can adjust your distributor timing from the outside. <clears throat> this one here did not have any of that. You had to do it from the inside. You see the slots were on the inner case. So you had to take everything back off to adjust your distributor timing. So that that's pretty cool to see that. Um, trying to figure out what else I wanted to show you guys. This one uses the well-proven bronze um, main support for your crankshaft. I notice a lot of engines are using these now because they work. And of course we got our main caps, you know, that go inside here, upside down here to hold those bronze bushings in and support the crankshaft. Um, the timing gears for the camshaft and crank now have Marks. See, there's three. One, two, three. And there's actually one up here. Oh, that's just a piece of clothes. So it has where you set your timing compared to your crankshaft. Has one, two, where you set your timing. So, from what I gather, from what I've seen between the two engines, um, this little dot here on the bottom of your crankshaft gear goes in between those like that to create a three position notch there. That's what I'm seeing. Um, because mine I had to kind of turn my camshaft by hand until I figured out the cam timing in it, which took quite a while. But other than that, it still has the, um, the one-way bearing starter on the thing with a gear not a belt 
which is good. A lot of the other stuff has been really machined well, so it fits together real nice. This one here, I had to hand fit almost everything, and I had to tap some holes because it was a it was a sample uh, prototype engine. So now the crankshaft, I noticed on the back. This is just some of the stuff I noticed off the bat. I'm gonna put this whole thing together this weekend and get it running. Um, I'm still waiting for the ignition kit to come, which is my CDI unit, my hall sensor, and my spark plugs. They're supposedly on the way. The shaft's coming out of the back of the, the crank on the uh, prototype is four millimeter. The crank shaft coming out on the back of the production version is five millimeter. That's a good thing because if you want to hook this directly up to a universal joint or something like that or a drive shaft, five millimeter is usually the standard, you know. So that's cool. I really like that. And the quality of this crank shaft is really good. Now I checked each journal on here, you know, your raw journals, and they all come up to be 599. Because it's supposed to be a six millimeter um, journal so that 599 gives it just a little bit of room to keep oil inside it without running dry um, other than that it came with a full complete gasket kit head gaskets belts um, oil pan these are the Teflon style gaskets and this for your timing cover in the front has a paper one but the Teflon ones are really cool because you can reuse them over and over and over again so that's I like those um, one other thing I did notice that I was really excited about when you put your timing all together you have to grease it you know still grease it but here's what I noticed on the front cover You'll see a little notch at the very bottom down here where that goes into the block and there's a rubber O-ring on the outside here that seals it. That's going to let oil get splashed up and oil our timing gears. That'll be nice. That way we won't have to tear it apart, you know, after so many hours and re-grease everything. Because um, this here, it's a, it's a lot of work to take all this off just to re-grease your timing set. So they've already taken care of that and looked ahead. That's cool. Good thing there. Um, and basically the rest of the engine is pretty much the same um, as far as the twin carbs, the brackets, um, the starter motors. You know, they're all the same with the gear on it. Um, that works well for the Toyin uh, V8. So there's a lot of things I see that a lot of other companies are doing to these as far as um, you know your um, main journals you know making those nice and beefy and solid the starter motors with the gear not the belts all this stuff they're they're seeing what's working now and this is the whole part of the early transition of when they're building an engine you know they this is uh like I say, it's the larva stage. So, so you think about this, what, six years ago, the, the Toyin um, 100 came out, you know. So, I mean, those are still pretty good engines, you know. They had a debacle with the, uh, you know, the L400, but now, you know, through changes and changing bearings and all that stuff, you know, they're, they're working it out. Um, so, you know, these, I don't know what the longevity of these engines are because I mean you know some of them were nitro and the nitro ones were really expensive to run because like you say nitro is about fifty dollars a gallon and now these are all going to be gasoline so with oil in them and that you know it's just like that engine there it's gasoline with oil you know that's cool and so anyways guys any questions, comments, feel free to hit me up. 
Um, you guys know my last video I was working on that and all this and I do have many projects going at once and um, so my plan is to put on a pot of coffee and sit down and get all caffeined up and put this whole engine together and wait for my CDI unit to come and uh, when the CDI unit comes then we'll be able to fire it up so I'm excited uh, I love hearing a new baby cry when you first fire an engine up you get the you get the feel of how it's going to be how it's going to run you get to tune it and then then you get to put it in something so anyways I'm getting back to this love to all and I'll catch you later man adios